Their statement was so incredibly biased. They're not even trying to hold off their anti-Semitic, Jew-hating view of Israel. We're talking about the U.S. State Department, uh, the Biden administration, but not to be too upset, folks, because we still have Texas. Texas is holding a fair hand of Jewish support out there. Stay tuned to the end of the show to find out that all right here at The Israel Guys. Hello and welcome to The Israel Guys, where we believe that in a world of Jew hatred, anti-Semitism, propaganda, fake news, and incredible biased um, media and stories, you should connect to the true and authentic stories of Israel. We're The Israel Guys. You should subscribe if you're watching on YouTube. Rumble, if you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, go ahead and hit subscribe or follow as well. And turn on those notifications because we also have a video every Monday now, Mondays and Thursdays. You can get lots of content from The Israel Guys. And um, by the way, this content is free, and if you guys want to support our work, you can do so right now during, only during the month of July. Anybody that signs up as a monthly donor at $25 or more is gonna get one of our brand new, have it on the screen there, uh, tumblers. High quality, incredibly. I haven't even got one yet, I'm so excited. Uh, so go over there to patreon.com slash the Israel guys or the Israel guys slash uh, israelguys.com slash donate links in the description below we would appreciate it so much if you would consider supporting the israel guys network so we can continue keeping the content free um and by the way if you want to sign up to come to israel make sure you visit the website serveisrael.com spaces are filling up very rapidly okay so we're going to start with a story that you're very familiar with and it's been covered Lots on the mainstream media, and we've covered it a few times. Way too much, actually, on the mainstream but, um, media. There is a new development to this story that you need to know about, and it has to do with the U.S. State Department. Yeah. And at first, when I was putting these notes together, I thought, well, I'll just read the highlights. But then I realized that the official statement from the State Department spokesman, Ned Price, um, was pretty short, and every single word was so incredibly trying to figure out how to say this you don't have PC, to say it nice. You, know? you can just say it the way it is. It's uh, like going along with yeah. the propaganda. I, I don't know. It's just yeah. we just celebrated the Fourth of July, and we're Americans. This is just right. hard. I got, I'm going to read you this. Hey, we've got a piece. shocking. Okay, you're going to be Texas shocked. will save us in the end. Let's go ahead. We'll yeah, save stay the truth tuned on for all Texas sides. at the very end. Stay thank, tuned. Thank, thankfully, we have Texas. Okay, this is official statement from the U.S. State Department spokesman Ned Price, and it's titled on the killing of Abu Akleh. Shireen Abu Akleh was the uh, Al Jazeera journalist who was tragically killed in the line of fire in Jenin, city in northern Samaria, Arab city in northern Samaria. Okay, here's the statement, quote, after an extremely detailed forensic analysis, sorry, I should preface this with, um, the Palestinians refused to allow anyone else into the investigation, including Israel, which Israel uh, said they would be happy to co cooperate in any kind of investigation, but the Palestinians refused. Well, just this week, they announced that they would hand over the bullet to the United States supervision, and they would conduct their own um, independent analysis. So they did that, and this statement from the U.S. State Department is in response to that. Quote, after an extremely detailed forensic analysis, independent third-party examiners as part of a process overseen by the U.S. Security Coordinator could not reach a definitive conclusion regarding the origin of the bullet that killed Palestinian-American journalist Shireen Abu Akleh. Ballistic experts determined the bullet was badly damaged, which prevented a clear conclusion. Okay? <laughs> Pause. Basically, they said, we conducted a thorough analysis, forensic analysis and investigation. We could not conclude, we, we did not have a clear conclusion, a.k.a., or uh, basically saying, we do not know who killed her, who was responsible. The statement continues. In addition to the forensic and ballistic analysis, the USSC was granted full access to both Israel Defense Forces and Palestinian Authority investigation over the last several weeks. By summarizing both investigations, the USSC concluded that gunfire from IDF positions was likely responsible for the death of Shireen Abu Akleh. The USSC found no reason to believe that this was intentional, but rather the result of tragic circumstances during an IDF-led military operation against factions of Palestinian Islamic Jihad on May 11, 2022, in Jenin, which followed a series of terrorist attacks in Israel. 
The United States appreciates and continues to encourage cooperation between Israel and the PA in this important case. We will remain engaged with Israel and the PA on next steps and urge accountability. We again offer our deepest condolences to the Abu Akwale family. Do you think Ned Price had this written before or after the analyst? I'm thinking he might have. This could. It sounds like he could have written this him. script before they ever had anything out on it because it's exactly. I mean, look, we got Biden's visit coming up. They don't want to stir up trouble. This is a horrible time to release something that would. Well, can that we, would can be we just like put, try to put other. this in simple words? This three paragraph statement, which is already shockingly short, just put it in simple words. A. Okay, there's three paragraphs, three points. A. We don't know who killed her. The detailed forensic analysis and investigations revealed absolutely nothing. B, based on the conclusion of these uh, an- of this analysis and the investigations, we think the IDF was probably responsible for accidentally killing Abu Akle. <laughs> C, we're, uh, we we uh, continue to uh, support and encourage cooperation between Israel and the Palestinians. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Basically, the United States, I mean, well, like, what's happening? Like, is, could it not be any clearer Biden's visiting Israel soon next week? They don't or the want week to start trouble. They're putting a political Could it be spend. any clearer? I watched a news clip with Dr. Michael Oren, former IDF uh, officer, former spokesman in the IDF, served as a member of Knesset, served as Israel's ambassador to the U.S., um, and he was talking about how, really, there's no win-win for the United States in this situation, because if they cozy up to the Palestinians like they did, and obviously that's the path they chose, then it's going to make Israel angry, right? Um, But if they go the opposite, then it's going to make the Palestinians angry. So... And who would they rather make angry? Obviously, Israel, okay? Because Israel's not going to, like, respond with international attacks in the UN and the European Union and all these places and cause all kind of, you know, an outcry in the mainstream media. Okay? Obviously, they would rather make Israel angry. Uh, There's reports that Biden wants to visit a Palestinian hospital and basically, like, spend a lot of time with the Palestinians while he's here on his visit in the Middle East very soon. Um, And we know for sure it's public. The Biden administration's official policy, yeah. part of their official Israel policy, is pro two state solution, a pro Palestinian state. Okay, so we should not expect anything less. Uh, and can we just like repeat? There's no evidence that Israel was responsible for the killing of Shireen Abu Akleh. Obviously, her death is tragic. Many journalists will get in a minute are killed in the line of fire all the time. Um, but her death was tragic. Israel said it's possible that it could have accidentally been a bullet from one of their guns that struck her, but there's absolutely no evidence. And guess what? There is evidence that she was killed by Palestinian Islamic terrorists. And instead, CNN and uh, all kind of other media, and now the State Department have decided to just say, you know what? doesn't matter. There's no evidence. We've decided it's Israel's fault that they killed her because we want to make the Palestinians happy. Are you happy now? Okay, good. No, they're not happy, but that's where they're going to stop. Um, we got some responses from Israel because now you know Israel has a new prime minister, Yair right. Lapid. Um, he said, quote, Tragically, hundreds of journalists have been killed in recent years in combat zones around the world. The state of Israel recognizes the importance of freedom of the press and safeguarding journalists as they carry out their duties. At the same time, he said, quote, The IDF will continue fighting terror whenever and wherever necessary. As prime minister of Israel, he said, I give full an unequivocal backing to the IDF soldiers who risk their lives to defend the citizens of Israel from terrorism and who work around the clock for the security of Israel. So, you know, way to go for, way to go for him. He said, I'm, go. we're not backing down from terrorism. That's good. Uh, nobody's scaring us here because um, we're going to fight terrorism and defend the citizens of Israel whenever and wherever and however necessary. And even Defense Minister Benny Gantz, he, uh, he was pretty strong too. He said, quote, it's important to emphasize that during this operational event when Abu Akleh was killed, As in many others, hundreds of bullets were fired at IDF troops who responded with fire of their own, own, only in the direction of the sources of fire. Our troops and their commanders have the duty to defend the citizens of the state of Israel, and they have my full support to operate accordingly. At the same time, we take all the possible measures to prevent harm to uninvolved civilians while maintaining freedom of the press. Luke, i got to get into something real quick here because a lot of people don't understand the situation and they, they've heard so much about a reporter dying and they don't realize that mm-hmm. uh, these reporters are like in the in a war zone. Mm-hmm. There's a battle going on. Um, i got to quote wow. Al Jazeera for a moment here because this well, is really going to lay the context saying, like, of what we're about to Watch about. Dr. Michael Oren yeah. and he said, as a former paratrooper, he was a combat soldier. Yeah. He said, 
a lot of the journalists, combat journalists, they they did things that soldiers were not like that yeah. were more dangerous than what soldiers were doing yeah. because they were trying to get the story. Right. They would run out right. in the crossfire, right? Just because they're trying to get that got to get that, a story that best story. story. So let's listen to what Al Jazeera says here. It says investigations and video evidence show that there was no armed Palestinians in the area where Abu Akleh was killed. So uh, we gotta just know that Al Jazeera, well, a one hundred percent propaganda machine operation here. Can we play um, that clip? I want, I want to put like a couple seconds of that clip up because yeah, just, it's like yeah. no guns. Palestinian Islamic terrorists shooting in the street at the IDF, and then they shout, "We just hit somebody! Somebody just fell down!" This is the video Guess they're what? actually playing. No IDF soldiers were were uh, shot during that operation. So I wonder who they hit. <laughs> yeah, let's watch this video real quick. Okay, so the most important thing I've got to got to say here is one, Al Jazeera totally let's Give all credits, go out the door. Uh, you can't listen to Al Jazeera. They're a fake news, propaganda machine. Well, they're state funded, Qatar funded, yeah, okay. and controlled media. They're not independent. Uh, media. Secondly, just so you know. Secondly, we've got to note is is that Abu Akleh is a journalist on the line of fire. Mm-hmm. She's involved in a war scene. IDF a don't war just zone, go yeah. into Janine and just play around. They're going in to take out terrorists. So. As bad as it sounds, uh, Abu Akhle is a pro-Palestinian journalist. She's standing beside a terrorist trying to get some footage that's going to go around the world as anti-Israel, right? Because the Israelis are coming to Janine. It sells. It's what sells. So she's sitting there. She's trying to cover this story. And if you're... Listen, if, if you're a terrorist sitting here, and then that you're a journalist sitting here, and the IDF is going in, and then there's a firefight, bullets flying in both directions because it's a war, that's what happens in war, then yes, people are going to get hit. And if you're not there as a jihadist warrior, then you probably, I'm just saying, it's you're likely going to get hurt. It's not a good situation to go stand behind well, a look jihadist in Janine yeah. when the IDF is trying to kill the enemy the enemy can we look at the stats for a second since yeah. 1990 there have been 2600 journalists killed in action killed in combat yeah 700 journalists have been killed by u.s forces since 1990 okay. 11 journalists that have been killed in the last 30 years have belonged to al jazeera guess how many investigations into their death well that's Josh. the real kicker Luke. how many investigations have there been into two into the 2600 journalists that have been killed in the last 32 years, including 11 of Al Jazeera's journalists. Zero. Absolutely zero. Zero. That's just zero investigations. Do you know what the definition of anti-Semitism is? Yeah, let's get According that. to the uh, Anti-Defamation League, if you hold Israel to a unique or different standard and single them out, that is by definition anti-Semitism, <laughs> a.k.a. Yeah. Jew hatred. Yeah. Okay? You're holding them and singling them out to a different standard than anyone else in the world, treating them completely differently, judging them differently, investigations differently. Oh, well, investigations at all, okay? That is outright and blatant anti-Semitism. We like to call it Jew hatred because that's exactly what it is, an Israel hatred. 100%. Luke, can we just say that one more time? 2,600 journalists have combat journalists, that is. If you're in combat journalist, you have a highly likely, there's a highly likely chance that you're going to be killed because guess what? And you're like, in a combat yeah. zone. Your bullets are flying around you. You're trying to cover story. This is not your just everyday kind of person. These are people that have a no. unique uh, brain that want to run out into the space. But to places where bullets are flying with without a gun, they're not part of the fighting. They're telling the story. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a unique situation. They're not just it's every day yeah. you have I mean, people yeah. like this, and and for the good and the bad. I'm telling you. I mean, sometimes it's a good thing to get tell the story, but literally your life is on the line all the time. And for the 2,600 combat journalists that have died before, that really the world could care less yeah. about. I guess like there was well, no, I mean, there no uh, like, uh, zero investigations. It, 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 it's innocent, non-political. Let's innocent people that die. It's tragic. We're not diminishing. You know, Shireen Abu Akleh's death at all. You know, she's an innocent civilian, um, died while doing her job, and it's tragic, okay? It's absolutely tragic no matter who killed her. But it's absolutely horrific to hold Israel to a completely different standard yeah. than the 2,599 other journalists that have been killed in the line of fire, yeah. okay? 
Bottom line. Um, and unfortunately, the United States State Department has caved in and bowed down to this anti-Israel pressure and this anti-Semitism against Israel. Probably a lot of it has to do with President Biden visiting Israel very soon, okay? Because yeah. he's obviously trying to cozy up to the Palestinians and the Palestinian Authority. We're going to get to some good news here in just a second. But first, got to tell you about today's sponsor for the show. Yeah, we got another sponsor. Um, and this is a book that I personally read. Again, I told you we don't do sponsorships of things that we haven't read or tested um, or can get behind. Burning But Never Consumed, The Hebrew Bible in Turbulent Times was written by an Orthodox Jewish lady just a couple of hills over from where we are right now in here, here in Judea and Samaria. Uh, she made Aliyah from the United States and lives here in Judea and Samaria. I personally read it, read it, found it a very refreshing perspective on the times we live in and a source of hope for the future. We live in very interesting times. Historians love such periods, but for us stuck in the present, there's a lot of chaos sometimes. We're talking about fake news propaganda, wokeism, it's, you know, we feel like we're stuck in those times sometimes. Um, older voices of our culture can give us the wisdom perspective to overcome this, and one of those is the Hebrew Bible. This is about the Hebrew Bible and kind of like the, the voice of hope that it can give us into the times that we live in today. And this book, Burning But Never Consumed by Anne Levin, is a uh, new book that explores our troubled relationship with this landmark, the Hebrew Bible. Um, you can join Anne Levin on a tour of how woke culture uh, vilifies the Hebrew Bible in politics, academia, entertainment, and the media. And then the author leads us through this morass to the clarity and common sense available to us in the Hebrew Bible. There's a lot of clarity and a lot of common sense that you can find in the Bible, especially the Hebrew Bible. So I encourage you, pick up a copy of this book, link in the description below. Easy to read, very refreshing, very encouraging. Uh, order today, link in the description below. Super great book. Josh, guys, let's we got talk good about news. Texas. Texas good news. Good news. Please, some good news. Yes, please, some Stay good news. Stay with us, guys. And uh, guess what? The State Department didn't have anything to do with this. Uh, and this is maybe, uh, and actually, the Biden administration has absolutely nothing to do with this either. And believe it or not, it's the Texas GOP. The Republicans of Texas mm. now adopt their 2022 platform. Um, Can we just you know, comment below if you like Texas? or if you love Texas, or if you live in Texas, just drop it down <laughs> below. We want to hear from you guys. And we know there's a lot of you out there, okay? You know, uh, Tennessee just a few months ago passed the most, uh, the strongest uh, anti-BDS legislation in America, which I would just like to say as a Tennessean, uh, <laughs> Tennessee and Texas, we stand hardcore in support right. of Israel. You know, the, the uh, Florida's the gonna be strongest. some good competition yeah, soon, Florida's though. Florida's coming so. in. We've got a lot Floridians, of Floridians, you can, you know, you can get in down there on that, the conversation, that's right, too. That's right. That. We've got a lot of great states in America that are holding the line out there for conservatism, for Israel support, uh, for just pro-Israel uh, stance, which we should be. The ally, Israel, standing in the Middle East, fighting Islamic Jihad, and what are we doing? We're, we're bashing Israel for uh, the content that we just spoke about before. When we're an ally, we're supposed to be standing with Israel, we're supposed to be supporting Israel, to fight her enemies, especially when it comes to Islamic Jihad. But no, we're going to go visit the hospitals of the Islamic Jihad. We're going to go see how the Hamas is faring and how the PA... No, absolutely not. It's absolutely ridiculous what America is doing to its ally Israel right now. Make that clear uh, As before we go on. That's ridiculous. This should not be happening in America. They should not be treating Israel as they are right now. This is horrific. You know, I, think, I feel like we have like a, a little bit of a theme of like progressivism, woke culture, cancel, cancel culture, anti-Israel rhetoric going on today. Yeah. Uh, but thankfully, we what we are seeing in the United States is individuals, groups, and then states, individual states, yep. taking a stand for uh, morality, a stand for truth, and a stand with Israel. That's right. Which I think Texas is just right like there. This, so this is their official, official 2022 yep, platform. the GOP yep. platform. That's right. So this is uh, this is passed. This is this has been adopted as the, plat the running platform for 2022. Uh, and there's a little section. Obviously, there's massive amounts of paperwork, and you can read the whole list in the description below. But when it comes to Israel, let's just look at what the what they have on the platform uh, for the Republicans running. Uh, at least the Texas side. We'll see what the rest of America. I think this would be a great, great little piece here to, for the rest of the states to run on. Uh, honestly, this is what America Just copy, should guys. Be doing. Copy and copy paste. and go. The Tennessee, Texas Florida. Let's standard. go. Let's do go. this. Um, it says, uh, "Quote from the from the the script: We respect Israel's right of sovereignty." Boy. 
that's just a wow. great idea. Let's respect that's a word Israel's a lot of right of sovereignty. Are scared of. Yeah, so scary word there. Sovereignty. Nobody can be sovereign. It's, it's not a woke word. It's like, mm. no, you're going to have ter- boundaries and territory, and you're going to defend yourself. And that's what it says right here. Self-determination de- um, and self-defense and, and therefore support. And we're going to go through a list of what the GOP will support Israel to do. They support the U.S. Embassy in Israel's relocated to in Israel to be relocated in Jerusalem. They support that move and it's going to stay there. They it's not moving anywhere. It's Israel, uh, Israel's eternal and indivisible capital. That's you know what? To me that's a lot of strength. When you base your foundations on King David's principles. That's really what to me the Republican uh, at least you know conservative Christian Republicans out there they're ba- this is bible-based concepts, really. And so when you go to the Bible and you see King David's capital, Jerusalem and Israel, and then and this Israel today is revived and back on the stage, let's let's treat it like, mm-hmm. you know, this is biblical kind of times where Israel's back and we need respect, just as we would if King David himself were running the the empire here. Uh, let's let's respect Israel as a godly thing, as a biblical thing. Josh, and we got a couple other the GOP uh, is doing other that. Texas GOP uh, points as part of their official platform. Obviously, the U.S. Embassy. Yeah. And Jerusalem is the undivided capital. We got they're supporting Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights, their right to exist, right to secure borders, right to the land secured by practicing the only thing I'm gonna add defense here, from enemies. We're going to get it added eventually, maybe maybe the next run. Uh, we need to get because they specifically mentioned Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights. They need to specifically mention Israel's sovereignty over Judea and Samaria. Yeah, that'll but, be the next. But they did but take they, the first they, they step, did, they like, did make a, a great step, step that nobody in the yeah. world has no. ever taken. Yeah, let's let's and that is. Prohibition of a Palestinian state within the historical borders of Israel, as it would jeopardize Israel's security and would force Israel to give up land that God gave to the Jewish people, as referenced in <laughs> Genesis. My Talking about part. the Hebrew Bible, guys. I mean, they went. They said, as referenced in Genesis, this is Israel's um, land, Wait. historical borders, yeah. as given to the Jewish people in Genesis. You know, good old Texans not refraining from referencing the Bible to make a point. Like Genesis, the you know the old, m- most respected and oldest book in the world, we're actually going to use it. This yeah. is this is what d- and you I know, mean actually coming out to say they 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 are publicly coming out in support of the prohibition of a Palestinian state. Man, that's strong. So yeah. way to go, way Texas. to go, Texas. And we uh, hope there's some other really great on. other great points in their platform. Um, I think we got links down below if you guys want to check it out. That's right. Yep. Uh, just uh, the other big point that we got to mention in here is um, anti BDS. They went really hard on this. They're saying this cannot be tolerated. We're not gonna. We're not gonna. We're gonna prohibit the anti-Semitic move of boycott, divestment, and sanctions. Uh, it can't happen. Can't happen. And we're gonna stand with Israel, and we're gonna make sure that this doesn't happen. So that uh, that's amazing. And yeah. I also would note uh, the 2016. If we were going to compare quickly, uh, the 2022 was just just, it's just gotten happened better. now. Yeah. Uh, it's really gotten better because in 2016 they were still kind of. Uh, playing around with the idea of a two-state, they use two-state language. They they were support obviously Israel supportive, but uh, using language that they were going to try to uh, you know just be be supportive of Israel and in a two-state kind of lingo. Mm-hmm. Obviously, what we just read is way more advanced and and pro-Israel's uh, lingo and and worded in a way that uh, has really uh, conveys more of a Republican approach to an ally Israel. Being strong and and being uh, able to stand on its own two feet in the Middle East with full backing of America as it should be. Uh, so way to go. Hats off to the GOP in Texas, and we hope That's this right. carries on uh, throughout the rest of the states. Okay, guys, we got to wrap it up, but uh, here's what you can expect from us and what you guys should be prepared for as well. Let's keep our eyes open because Biden's coming to visit Israel in the Middle East pretty soon here. We're going to keep our eyes open at exactly what's going to be happening there. You'll get the full report. Make sure you subscribe. Um, Don't expect anything better from the Biden administration or during his visit than what the State Department's official statement already said about blaming Israel for the killing of the Al Jazeera journalist. But if you're from Texas, way to go. Give yourselves a high five, a pat on the back. Make sure you drop a comment down below if you're from Texas. Way to go, guys. Uh, Don't forget to pick up a copy of Burning But Never Consumed, the Hebrew Bible in Turbulent Times. Amazing book. Link in the description below. And any new monthly donors on Patreon or at theisraelguys.com for uh, the network. Any new monthly donors that are $25 or above will get one of our brand new uh, tumblers. Amazing, high quality. I'm looking forward to getting one of these myself. Guys, make sure you subscribe. Get that conversation going down below. Make sure to tune out the fake news and anti-Israel propaganda and tune into what is actually happening here in the heartland of Israel. 
We'll be back next week. We're the Israel guys. Thanks so much for watching. Two quick things before you go. One, smash that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the notifications bell so you don't miss out on any more of our content. Secondly, if you want to help us produce more stories and authentic truth straight from Israel's heartland, you can do so at patreon.com slash the Israel guys or at our very own website. It's the Israel guys.com. Both links are in the description below.